Good evening. Uh, another good day here. We're going to talk about some motivation and some goals today. Hang on just a second here. Let me end a few things I got running and we will go right into it. Everybody should be able to hear me just fine. Hang on just a second. I'm on another screen. Hopefully we are still working. Sorry, just a second here. I'm just making sure I'm not dropping frames or anything. And flipping around here. Hopefully everybody is all right today. Um, we should be live. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I know I have some comments and some things in here already, which we will get to in just a few moments. Goals, again, as I said, we will be talking about. We'll be talking about the, the smart way to set goals, how that can help you increase your business and sales in general. Um, I know it sounds kind of crazy that just thinking about things can help it, but the right mental state, the right motivation to get you moving, in my personal opinion, can be a, a wonderful way to increase your sales. Um, hopefully everything is coming through fine. My end looks like it's lagging, but I can't quite tell on the other side. Uh, I have a big delay today, which I usually don't, so maybe uh, YouTube changed some setting, but uh, we will go on from here. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, my feed is frozen already, so I do not know. Hang on, I'm sorry. Again, my feed is totally locked. But anyway, um, sales-wise, we'll talk about a little bit. We'll talk about some of the glitches. The boxes that were given away or the coupon has been emailed. Now, I only have an email in one of our accounts, so I don't know if they only sent it to certain people. There was an error sending them out. I'm not sure, and I had many other people tell me that they didn't get an email at all. Or again, they have several stores, they got it in one and didn't get it in the other one. So anyway, it looks like my chat is starting to come back up. Somebody is having a problem hearing me, please shout that out. Uh, hang on just a second here. I got several things going on right now, so I think once one of those clears, it should be better. Uh, let me just make sure everybody can hear. Hopefully, if somebody can't hear me, please post a little comment down on the tab here in the chat. Again, it looks like my chat is starting to come back on here. Yeah, I don't mean to be holding up the conversation here, but YouTube is running terrible right now. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it looks like everybody can hear me. Um, let's go ahead and call some names out here. Um, Again, if I can get back to the top, okay. We've got Vintage Philly PA, good evening. Duncan popped in a question here as well, which I will address if I can get back up to that. Now my feed's just popping up a whole bunch of stuff. So anyway, I hope my message is a little higher in the chat this week. And fear and sales, great, but seem to get a different eBay error every day listing. I haven't had many errors I've been having a lot of errors that say, oops, it's us, the page you were looking for can't be found or something along that line. I've been getting that quite often, which um, is really annoying, especially if you're deep into something, you finally got something you're looking for, then you got to start all over again. Uh, as I've said in another video here, uh, eBay has, um, or the person who was in charge of their IT has stepped down or left the company. I don't remember. I think they went to Zoom, the, the person who was doing it. Now, I've had nothing but uh, issues with eBay lately with all kinds of stuff. I had somebody, and it, it kind of like caught me off guard saying I'm being negative about the issue on, on the aspect of eBay. If eBay did some good stuff, I do call it out as well. But lately, everything just seems to be in the opposite direction. Yeah, I know I still make good money on the site and all that. But the point is that, you know, they're not considering... It's all short-term goals. It has nothing to do with longevity of the company or anything like that from what I personally see, which is annoying to me because <clears throat> as a business person, I'm looking at this as a business point. I'm not like, I don't have anything personal against a business. It's all business, uh, you know, mentality in my book. You know, it's, it has nothing to do with my personal feelings or anything like that eBay, if it's if something they're doing that affects my personal business, I'm going to call it out. You know, I don't care what eBay really, you know, has to say about me complaining about it because, you know, I have all the rights to say or, or you know, address the issues that affect my personal business all I want. I mean, it, this is my money. This is how I pay my bills. I know a lot of people, which I see many in here, pay their bills by doing this. To eBay, you know, they've got employees. The employees, you know, get paid either way, no matter what happens to us. 
the CEOs get their money, they get their bonuses and all that stuff, but it doesn't, I mean, it's just like they're, they take us for granted and every step of the way is all I see it. You know, just like that survey they did. They even sent a, a letter out about that survey I was talking about last week. Sorry for how long it took and blah, 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 blah. They realized apparently after the fact that they, because I've never received a sorry about how long it took. The way they set it up was just, whoever even set up the survey, some of the, the way they set it up was even screwy. It wasn't explained well. There was some, it was just a bad survey. Yes, I have Mountain Dew and it's probably uh, green screened out, but yeah. Airwise, I mean, I can only tell you the ones that I've seen. I haven't seen rather anything like that. Uh, you can check, and I do check once in a while, like maybe once a month, to see if the same one has been listed multiple times. On your, in the hub, on your main page of the hub, there's a spot to look for double listings. Now, I can't tell you where it's at because you can set up your own hub however you want. I know where it's at in mine. It's in the top row, the middle column down there. If you have the hub, you know what I'm talking about. You can move those in any direction. You can put like sales first or put uh, listings that you have left for free, whatever you want. You can arrange those however you wish in the hub. So you'll have to just look in there, but there is a spot to look. So if eBay lists something, I would always actually honestly recommend doing it at least once a month just to make sure. That's on my list of things I do at the end of the month. And that's something I almost religiously do constantly at the end of the month. And I would honestly recommend everybody doing that. I, I can't say I've found one like that with eBay doing it. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen because I've had many people tell me that exact same thing. It, it would be great to be able to do a video on all the errors that people report to me. But man, I'd be spending all day just doing videos on that because it happens all the time. And, and I usually would wait till I get a bunch of people that say the same error. One or two glitches here or there could be who knows what. But, you know, when things like listing multiple times, your policies disappear, that's another one I heard. Your, your, the business policies just are gone from some of the listings. Now, that one I have seen from somebody else. They showed it to me in theirs. Um, you know, it just... Hang on just a second here. Marky's here for just a second. Let me show you what what happened uh, yesterday. Hang on, so I can see. I... Let me let me hop on. There you are. Yeah. Why don't you crouch down so you can? I'll crouch down. Oh. Little baby cottontail. Little wild rabbit. Yeah. I'll tell you where this came from in just a few minutes here, if you're interested. I gotta but feed it. The thing's adorable, I have to say. I've had a few when I was younger, but. The wife loves animals, and this thing is just so friendly. And of course, we'll release it into the wild. Yeah, we're life. not keeping it. No. But it's alert. It's it's doing good, actually. My husband saved it. Yeah, the, I was driving down the road the other day, well, yesterday, and I had just turned the corner on our own street, and I saw a, what looked like a crow attacking something. Mm -hmm. I didn't think anything of it, but then when the crow flew up, I saw a little tiny rabbit trying to move, and it was trying to kill the rabbit, so I literally right, stopped the car. Way. Yeah, you can. Okay. Up. I literally stopped the car, and uh, got out while the car was running, and ran out and scared the bird off. The bird wouldn't leave, so I ended up nabbing nabbing the baby here and bringing it home because they had just cleared out all their brush and shrubbery in front of that house to. I guess they're selling it or something, and uh, they, I couldn't figure out where to put it, and the crow wouldn't leave, so. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it would have killed it the way it was acting. Well, was... we were told that crows will peck out their eyes so that they'll die and then the crows will eat them. Yeah, it was just morbid. It was just, I mean, everything has to live, but I couldn't yeah. watch it knowing. I, I've had, we have a friend who has a pet rabbit as well. Well, I got to feed him. Yeah, Bye, it's an adorable little thing, but. Bye, Daddy. Yeah, it's adorable. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, we didn't know if it was going to live. I couldn't tell what kind of injury it had from that experience, but we're going to let it go out here. We called the, what was that? Uh, Wildlife. No, the nature, what was that? Nature's Nursery. It's a local, local uh, group that helps wild animals and stuff. And I talked to them. So, I mean, we reported the issue and the whole works. There's some kind of, um, I think it's not an endangered species, but I think um, due to the amount of, you know, domestic animals that kill them, I think there's something you can't do with it or something. But we've already verified and everything else. We're just going to release it at a park. Well, outside of the park, because you can't technically release it in a park either here in this area. Why, I don't know, but considering it's an indigenous animal, but uh, things adorable. I mean, it's it's almost ready to be out on its own. We're keeping it, I think we've got, 
another inch or two that it's got to grow before we uh, they said it should be safe to release. So we'll have that one for like two weeks, I think we're guesstimating. I've had some way when I was like a teenager. They're adorable little things, I have to say. The wife was just ecstatic when I came home with the thing, shivering and shaking. It was just an adorable little animal. I mean, hang on a second here. I'm trying to get back to the feed, but the feed has frozen again. So hang on. I'm sorry, folks. Let me pop back over here and try and get the feed back up. Feed's frozen. Nothing I can do. It won't unfreeze. Um, let's see here. Now it moves as soon as I go to answer a question. Hang on. We're going to pop back up because I see a ton of ton of uh, comments and questions already. Uh, hang on. Gabe's got one right here. I'm worried that when we switch to manage payments, we will have glitches on the items that are still connected to PayPal. I'm wondering how that smooth that uh, switch will be. You, if, if you're on managed payments, you're not going to have PayPal like you did before. There shouldn't be any difference to um, however you have it set up. As long as you're in managed payments, everything should be fine. I've been using managed payments in another store, and we haven't had any issues whatsoever with it. I don't, I don't need the money right away. So, I mean, that's the biggest issue everybody complains about, not being able to get the money um, immediately. Um, but, you know, for us, I don't care. I don't usually, you know, rush to get it to one account or the other. We've got several accounts, and sometimes I wait till it's a certain amount. That's the biggest complaint I've seen on managed payments. There's been some glitches where um, the fees and stuff had an issue or something, which has been corrected by uh, everything that I see. I don't think, in my honest personal opinion at all, business opinion here, that eBay has anything to gain from conning, you know, doing something wrong or trying to rip you off for pocket change from fees that might be, you know, accidentally levied on you. You know, things happen. You know, as long as they fix them, I'm not going to be upset with that. Um, there was some glitch on my, when I filed for, um, geez, what was it, uh, sales tax for a last quarter, first quarter of last year, it finally caught up and it was something they did. The The state sent me a notice saying this much money was overpaid um, and, uh, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that to get the money. You have to ask and request it. They don't just give it to you back, which is screwy. And then I had to write an explanation, which I don't know because I didn't even know what happened. I just punched in the numbers and my numbers were correct, so it was on their end, but... You know, stuff happens. As long as it gets corrected and, and stuff, I'm not going to be mad at eBay. There's so many other things that, you know, your time and energy mentally wise should be spent on. The, the least amount of time you can spend on worrying and, you know, getting upset about something that happens on eBay, you know, the better off you're going to be. I literally try to put it away and put it aside. You may see me doing a video and that's that's the topic of that moment when I'm doing the video. But honestly, after the video is done, usually I'm off doing something else, not even thinking about the video. Um, you know, that's just, just the way I think of it that way. If you're in your business mode, you're in your business area, which I'm in my business area, there's this is all that matters right now. You know, if the wife needs something, obviously I go take care of the kids or whatever the case may be. But I'm in business mode and that's all I care about. I'm not going to waste my time on something first I can't fix, second I can't do anything about, and third that I, I don't think it's intentional. Yeah, it's happening all the time, and there's lots of issues with eBay from what I see. It's not intentional, at least, is my biggest um, um, you know, alleviation of that. It's, it's not intentional that I can see. It's just poorly managed IT, basically. I mean, I don't even honestly have as much issues with YouTube, and I have a lot of issues with YouTube than I do eBay. Now, comparing any other platform I sell on, eBay gives me the most headache. You know, I, honestly, I, I can't say that enough. One way or another, uh, my the majority of my time, even if it's not the majority of where my money's coming from on any given day, is dealt with with eBay. Whether it be that, you know, that it's still, I still can't get the ability for people to request and have items combined in their cart. So meaning that on managed payments, if they pay for different items at different times, I'm going to get hit for 30 cents for each one of those those sales. Of course, I am adding in a 30, uh, uh, 30 cent sale or um, uh, uh, fee into, I believe, most of my listings to compensate for that. Um, I still am tossed up in the air on that, but that's that's my goal to alleviate that aspect of it as well. Um, uh, let's see, Gabe, another one. Then you mentioned once that you switched to managing your selling business like a general manager. If you, I always treat my business like a like I was a general manager. I'm pretty much always that way, as far back as I can remember. 
treat it like it's 100% serious, like you're doing it, you know, and it's it's like an essential aspect of life is how I treat it. I, I full mode, full business mode when I'm doing anything business. If we're outsourcing, the wife knows we're not playing around. We just go and do our thing, and that's what we do. I, You know, obviously I joke around with the wife, but, you know, not like... I normally would. We we literally try to stick everything business versus versus personal life. So if I'm on business mode, I don't do anything else. I don't you know check my cell phone or check anything else like that unless like my kids, you know, calling. I got special ringtones for family members, which I always recommend anybody who does it, or even vibrations where it vibrates more for a family versus you know uh, someone who's not family. You can do that in almost any phone. I, I always have it set up that way. So depending on the vibration or the the um, ringtone, you know, I know whether I should even pay attention to it. Most other things are pushed aside while I'm working. You know, try to keep your work time just to your work time. Don't be screwed off when you're supposed to be working. That's most people's problem is, you know, again, motivation. It all comes back to the motivation to be locked away and working all day long, you know, in your own house because it's not some new environment. It doesn't, it doesn't fulfill some people to be, you know, in the same place day after day after day after day. It gets boring to some people. You know, I, my, my, I'm beyond that kind of thinking, I guess, to some extent, because my goal is, is all that really matters. I'll, I'll, I, I'll not say tolerate, but even when stuff's bad, I'm still fine with going through what's ever going on. Because again, it, it's, it's a hiccup in the road uh, on the way to reaching my goal, I guess. Let, let's talk a minute here, and I'll go back to some questions since we're on the, the, I got myself onto the goals aspect of it here. Goals are, in my opinion, every time I've ever set a goal in a restaurant or, or any place, retail, wherever I've worked, I've set goals. For my regional manager, for the general managers that ran the entire stores that were under me, down to the regular hourly employees. I always had people set goals in every store that I was in control of. When I was a regional, I had 30 some odd stores, Washington, Virginia, and Maryland. Everybody had a goal, whether I put pitted stores in a five store range together against other five stores together. You put up some goals, but you can't put up goals for some folks that they can't reach. You want goals that are obtainable, but they're going to have to work at it. And I say that because usually if there's some incentive for reaching a goal, it feels gratifying and and like uplifting to have reached a goal and know you've earned something else for doing that, I guess could say. And, and that can go for, for reselling as well. For me, I've got like a master goal. I've got my goal for my business, you know, till the end of time is, is my goal to keep growing it. And I do set certain figures, you know, a year, two years out where I want to be with stuff. But I have daily and weekly goals. Sometimes I have monthly goals as well that I set either for me or for employees, like listing so many new items a day. Make a chart. Make a chart, keep it up on the wall, and you know constantly look at that. That's the first thing you do. How many listings did I get up today? You, a lot of people are surprised if they keep track of stuff like that, if they set a goal, you know, and they don't realize how far off from their goals they are. You may need to change the goal, but always set a decent goal, something that's going to be a little hard to get to, that's going to force you to get get to it. Your your treat could be, you know, taking the evening off or, or going somewhere or anything like that. Whatever you, you enjoy doing, have a beer, have a daiquiri, have a margarita, a shot of tequila, I don't care what it is, or go for a drive with the windows down and the music blaring in the car. I don't, I don't know what does it for everybody else. The the haul video that I did the other day, the one with the jewelry and the records, the one with the uh, Japanese pin that was in there. As soon as I pulled out the driveway, I had that radio just cranking. I was on the highway, you know, 70, 75. I think the speed limit was 70 there. And and uh, a good song came on, and uh, I just cranked it the whole way. I mean, it was just, it felt like the old days, like no care in the world, just rocking out. It was nice to get out and do something like that. Um, that was motivation for me. It felt good all the way to the hall because I haven't been out in a while to do something like that. So that's a good motivation, you know, the, the riding out on the highway, you know, I had Judas Priest. It was, uh, you got another thing coming was on just as soon as I hit the, hit the radio. I had, um, I had our, uh, satellite, uh, radio in the car. I, I live by that thing. I don't listen to the regular radio. That's a, that's a, um, that's my best pick of any item I've ever bought for technically resell was my XM radio for my car. 
Um, it has a lifetime. I've had it for four plus years, and I've never paid a dime other than the two ninety nine I got it for at Sabers. Our Sabers has been closed down for three years, so it came with everything. I've got two more of those, one for each kid that I've gotten through time. Um, but they have lifetime. I, you know, I can't beat that. But that's my best item I've ever gotten, and not by va or by money. You know how much I could have made, but by pure enjoyment of that thing. We've taken that all over the country, and. Anyway, we've got the boombox, which I scored at a pickup, too. But anyway, I love the XM radio, just if, if, if that's you. But it, it's a it's a it's a awesome feeling if you can get to the point where you're totally relaxed and it can just jam out like you're 17 again. I'm not trying to relive the past, but I, I have compared to how I was when I worked for people. The wife knows I was, you know, constantly on edge and stuff like that. These days I can literally honestly just crank down the windows and, and put all that aside and not have any of those concerns. You know, the future is so bright. I got to wear shades, I guess I could say. And it's what you make of it. I know everybody may not think that, but until, you know, everything started going my way, you know, I I, I didn't think about any of that stuff and comparing what it was before and, and after and you know, me and the wife were talking about how things have changed with, with our life and things like that. And we both feel totally different about literally everything, I guess you could say. The, the, the not having the stress, the aggravation of working for somebody, of poor decision making and things like that. Having to follow somebody who doesn't know what they're doing just because they're above you. I mean, there's so many things. Freedom, again, is the number one thing that... I personally take from online reselling freedom freedom is is it I don't care what else happens people say no it's money for you you're just saying that you make so much money and all this stuff I'm not rich I don't make a, a massive fortune of, of money at all I'm comfortable I don't I'm, I'm not one to be flashy as pretty much anybody knows I see people you know that that watch the channel in person occasionally I'm nothing I'm nothing spe uh, special or fancy but you know it's it's a thrill this whole experience to not have to deal with with a boss. I, I don't know any other biggest or any other overall feeling I get other than you know total lack of worry for I guess life experiences in general for something like this. I know that may sound like over over dramatic, but it's not. I, until you've hit a point where you can just sit back and honestly enjoy you know whatever you're doing without having any of that concern about oh god i gotta go to work tomorrow or it's friday night and work's gonna be terrible all those feelings are constant if you worked in a restaurant on friday or saturday night you know how busy it is well not right now but you know in the past and in some for some people it was just murderous jobs but you got to do what you got to do to pay the bills to get money coming in i i i can't express enough the motivation you get, I get, I guess, I don't know if everybody gets it, from knowing that I don't have to go work for somebody and knowing that I'm doing far better than I was when I was working for somebody, making six digits a year. It, it's, <clears throat> I don't know, it's, it's, it was a nerve-wracking, I don't want to risk my family's well-being when we went into this, but these days I'm... I'm grateful every day, you know, things, my, my outlook is, is totally different on things um, for more than, than just this. I mean, even though we've got issues, my son's got medical and stuff. I mean, we're all in a good place right now, I guess, is, is the point. And, and I couldn't do that. I couldn't feel this way without reselling. And I, that may sound crazy, but that's 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 the truth for me. I don't know what it is for anybody else. I can't tell you or tell you what you should or shouldn't feel. But for me, this is fulfilling. I don't mind in the same spot. I don't mind it because aspects of it are constantly changing. I constantly am cranking out sales. And if if you're like me, your sales are still just rolling in. I, I mean, it, it's it's almost to a, a funny point that you know, I, it's it's like they're just giving me these sales. I just Every time I turn around, there's my phone goes off or this goes off or sales. And, and like, um, I thought there was going to be some stagger. I have a bunch of, of college books up on Amazon. I thought, oh, man, it's going to kill it. They're delaying and all the other stuff. Man, I sold a whole bunch of college books this week. Got a lot of money off of Amazon this week. Very, very happy. I, these were merchant fulfilled, too, because at the point back when I was I got these books, I couldn't send them in because of the pandemic. So I just kept them on merchant. I got top dollar for them. I got FBA prices for them and I didn't have to pay the fee. I was very happy. I mean, it's just been one thing after another. 
you know, even like postcard sales or toy sales, the the button the button purchases. Oh, man, I got a, some really good postcards too. I got some excellent Primo farming collectible paper items from you know 1870s. I mean, every time I turn around, I've this these last couple of weeks things have just been thrown in my lap. Um, it's just been a really, really good, good experience lately. And I know there's a lot of bad stuff happening. I'm not trying to relate that. I'm talking business. I'm personally wise, you know, it's upsetting everything that's going on. Business wise, everything has been just phenomenal. And and it adds to the motivation. The better you do, the more motivation you'll have to do more and to be better at it. I, I, I can't ex express that enough. Goals, though, uh, back to goals. Just one more time. I'll go right back to the questions. Set some goals. I promise you, I don't care what anybody else tells you or what your personal feelings are on that. Set some goals. Write something down and put it on a wall. Buy yourself a dry eraser board or a big wall or desk calendar that you can put up there and put some goals. Today, Monday through Friday, I list 25 new listings every single day of the week myself. That's what you, you set up some goal like that. Set up a goal and see how far off or how, how you normally do. Or if you don't want to set a goal, write how many you do each day if it's listing wise and compare that next week see if you can get more than that and keep increasing those numbers find out ways to alleviate time wasting time like listing using too many photos or you know worrying about this or worrying about that take all that worry that's not going to be productive that's not going to give you any extra money you're worrying about stuff that you can't fix is not going to help you make any money you know, that's that's the bottom line. This is a money making business. I, you know, if I can push all the negative anger or whatever you have out of your brain for for the day that you're doing your work, that's the best thing you can do. All your your mind, your concentration needs to be on your business. If you're working for somebody, they don't want you messing around or, you know, coming in there half. I won't say the the, the, the half butt work. And, but that that's the case. You, you've got to be on the ball when you're doing this. Your concentration needs to be on eBay, on Amazon, on HIP or Etsy or wherever you are making money on. So anyway, um, how does your business compare before and after that transition? Basically, I treat it as a regional manager's job for most of our full-time selling. Maybe the first year or so, I didn't have any time because we were desperately, you know, living, you know, item to item for, you know, a couple of years almost. Um it's it's hard to say difference before and after because I've done this as a regional as well. When I worked as a regional, I still resold. We've done it for 20 plus years. So, you know, the the, the one thing I can say is always treat it like a 100% biggest, most important business of your life every day like that. You know, there, there's more to life than just worrying about money as well too. I enjoy what I do. I, I honestly and sincerely love the items that I get. I think you know that. You can hear how I talk about things. This phenomenal item. I love this. This is awesome. That's literally how I feel. I don't make up, you know, these are all comments I'm making on the spur of the moment. It's not like I'm re-recording those statements a hundred times over trying to get the right one or I write any of this out. I very rarely, I don't have any notes other than I wrote down that I wanted to talk about goals and motivation. And uh, in fact, there's, I don't know if you're even going to be able to see this. It's probably green screened out. Yeah, it's probably green screen. The reflection on it. That's my notes. That's my whole notes for the show. Just showing you. I don't I don't write anything else other than a topic. I feel this way. So I, I don't need a note to tell me how I feel. I know what it's done for me. So when I'm talking about this, this is literally from my heart. This is literally how I feel. You know, I, I can't express that enough in, in, in person. This is how I talk. I go on about stuff. I'm I'm very uh, into what I do. I'm I'm you know dedicated to my 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 industry. I'm dedicated to all this stuff. I'm almost to an emotional extent. I mean I'm passionate. And I know that I've seen people like uh, I won't mention names, but I've seen people say passion is for idiots. There's a video on YouTube by someone well known who I used to like until I heard that passion isn't for idiots unless you only care about the money. I care about what I do. Um and this this fulfills me. I, I can't express that enough. My kids like some of the stuff we sell. My sons like working it because it's neat. It's something interesting. The wife enjoys looking at it. I mean, I just can't express it enough. I, I, I could go on for hours about how how passionate I am about what I do. And, and I really feel that that 
helps you with your business. It, again, I have motivation. I have extreme motivation. I've got the goals. It all works together. Passion and motivation aren't really the same thing, but they, they work hand in hand. And I, I wish there was a button or something I could give you that would give you that if you don't have it and, and don't get it or don't think that something like that is possible. Again, I didn't have all this when I was working for somebody else. It was I was brain dead, it felt like. I mean, I did an awesome job. I always did my job. I never slacked off. But, you know, inside I'm thinking, man, I can't wait till the clock, you know, strikes 10 or whatever time it was. And, and it was such a relief to be off. You know, I don't, nowadays I don't even care if I'm, you know, off the show or I'm not doing this or anything else like that because I like doing this. I've gotten up to use the bathroom at like 3 in the morning and thought of something and came down, turned on the lights, cranked up a computer and did something for 20 minutes. I do that. I mean, I don't know if anybody else does that, but if I get something in my head, I want to just get it out or I'll write a whole bunch of notes down. I have a tablet next to my bed. Wife's got one too. Well, she's got a notebook, but I got a tablet. And, you know, I write down stuff constantly. Um, not for like stuff like this, just for like business ideas, projects, um, things like that. Uh, let's do some more co convo here away from that topic for a minute. We'll get to a few more comments and questions in just a second here. For those in Patreon, the second part of the 45 video is up tonight. As soon as the show's done, in fact, let me just pop over to the next screen. Um, and it is finished, so you will see it probably about 20 minutes after the show. It's uploaded. It's sitting in YouTube now. All I've got to do is add a thumbnail and um, go from there. So anyway, that will be up tonight. Uh, it's a three-parter. It wasn't planning on being three-parter, but it is a three-parter. End of the video for tonight. Again, this is the Patreon video that's up, um, the second part. There's some interesting stuff. There's some definite polo material in there and stuff that's very common that will get you some money as well, too. But that's enough on the Patreon. I will be answering questions, though, tomorrow morning. I do hate to put it off. It's been a, I've been up since like 4.30 this morning. Um, and, and it's been a very long day. Um, I probably look like I might have uh, bags under my eyes today, but um, I've been trying to get this all done. I just want to be done with the the Shopify and Infra, everything set up and just be done and have it rolling and not have to think about it again. I want to move on to full-fledged fourth quarter. I've just had some employees asked to work tomorrow, so we're going to have a full house, um, well, not full house, uh, three-person shift here. Nobody's going to be close enough, and they did wear masks. Just FYI. But uh, employees are back, uh, which is a good thing for me because, again, I have more time. I have had to train and show how to use Ink Frog and the whole work. So that's taken up some extra time where I'm blowing hours, but I'm not being productive. That's what you're going to do. If you're going to do Ink Frog, if you're going to do Shopify, you're going to waste some time and some energy and some money to learn it. Um, I've had somebody ask, I don't remember if it was on Patreon or YouTube, but I had somebody ask, um, is it worth the investment in uh, Shopify or, you know, slash Ink Frog to be safe? For me, for 30 bucks a month for Ink Frog, what it does, it saves my listings and I basically own a copy of them. I think that's probably worth 30 bucks. It's like insurance. It's 30 bucks for my Shopify store. Um, and I think it's worth that as well, too, again, for the same basic principle that it's mine and that I can hook it up and link it anywhere I want. It's 60 bucks for for the amount of volume that I have. It's 60 bucks. Now, if you you're not making a ton of money and you're still, you know, just getting by, don't don't shell out the money until you got stuff rolling. until you know more about what's going on and, and what you're doing and all would be my personal opinion. Don't spend money on anything you don't need to in, until you have to even like a scanner or, or a better camera or anything like that. Until you have the money coming in, keep your investment into the business small. Don't be buying ex ex uh, uh, you know extravagant things or anything like that for your business. Personal life. Don't buy anything new unless you 100% have to as well if you're just starting off doing this. Save every dime you can. Micromanage and penny pinch every single dime you can. You will be surprised what a dollar here, a dollar there equals at the end of the year. A month's worth of rent, two months' worth of rent, maybe even more than that for some people, even when you're just starting off. Every dime counts. Just like driving around and, and keeping track of your, your mileage so you're not just randomly driving around. I draw everything out. If I'm going somewhere, I know exactly where I'm going. I know the best route, where I'm going to save the most in gas or, or the time or whatever you need to save. Sometimes it's time, sometimes it's gas. You know, there, there's so many ways to, to figure stuff out or to expand your business. But again, back goals and motivation. Those are the best things I can tell you. If, if you have the, the passion like I do for this, 
your 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 goal sh my goal isn't to be rich my goal isn't to be a millionaire my goal isn't to be the, the biggest reseller in the world. I don't care about that. That's all, in my my opinion, just an ego thing in my book. Again, nothing wrong with that. If that's you, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Everybody has their own opinions and their own feelings. That's just not me. And again, nothing wrong with it, if it is you. In the past, it has been me. But these days, family and enjoying my life and enjoying what I do and, and enjoying the stuff that I sell and have around me. It's like a museum every day. I love museums. You know, I can't wait to go down to see the new exhibit down at the, the Toledo Art Museum down here. I love going and seeing the Egyptian room It's or the, the Renaissance room. It's just an incredible thing, just going to museums in my book. The Smithsonian was pretty cool. I love that kind of stuff. So it's, it's awesome. It's neat. It's just unfathomable some of the stuff that you can, you can find and, and enjoy and have around you. You know, I, I used to go to, my parents took us to a place called Greenfield Village and Greenfield uh, Museum. I've taken my kids there. I've taken, I'm sorry. And um, I, I, as a child, I was like just fascinated by the vintage stuff. My grandmother had antiques everywhere when I was a child. When I was small, since ever I can remember until she passed, and I owned some of her personal belongings still that were made in 1840s. And, and, and to me, having the vintage, the, the collectibles, the history is exciting you know I, I i just i can't express it enough i just if everybody had that passion you would get it um you would understand you know the motivational aspects and goals and i i wish i wish i could just give you a pill and you would feel feel that that strongly about this i don't give up i i'll, I'll i i just i i don't give up i keep trying and trying until I succeed and that that's 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 what you got to do you're gonna fail a whole mess of times you're gonna waste money on stuff that's just not right or not worth it you're gonna go to the wrong sale somebody's gonna skank you out you're gonna get ripped off on eBay that's all part of the game you know as long as at the end of the day you, you don't let it you know carry you down I get ripped off occasionally it's been a long time I stay away from items that are high risk I stay away from electronics uh, I, I've tried to eliminate everything that aggravated me in my business and steer towards stuff that I like to sell. I mean, I like the paper. I just, I can't express it enough. Enough on that. I could go on this, as I said, all day long about that stuff, but it's annoying. Let's go back to Duncan VR. It's annoying when you, you sell somewhere on your own listings and your policies vanish. The other day, eBay listed my one listing four times. Again, I've heard both of those complaints from many people. So fully agree that it must be happening. I, I trust Duncan. I've talked to him on many occasions, including off of here, um, he's got a, uh, a, uh, um, Facebook group as well too. I think you have a channel. I think you can go to it from his thing here. Let me, let me call out one other person here. Annie has been, um, one of my, uh, mods for a very long time. Annie has been on my page. Annie's got some videos out. I think it's literally A-N-N-I-E is Annie's channel name, if I'm not mistaken. But she's got a lot of videos, and she's been putting out a lot lately on how to do policies and things like that. You know I don't usually call out other channels very often, but Annie's got some really good videos out there. She's spent a lot of time on it. If you want to you know, get a little more breakdown on something from someone who's you know, very nice and understands how it works as well, check out Annie. And if she pops on here... I'll holler her out again. She might be on here. I just may not have gotten down to her. But I noticed some of her videos, and I've watched some of hers in the past. And I don't watch many other videos, but Annie's a very nice person, too. Very knowledgeable. She usually, in Patreon, makes some comments, and she usually knows what she's talking about. I think I, I don't think I've caught her wrong on anything, honestly, I should say. So I think she always pretty much knows, or she doesn't say it if she doesn't know, is what my take would be. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, Lefty Scissors. Really like this show a lot. I've uh, been a seller for many years and love the info. Well, thank you very kindly. Cornelius, how are you doing this evening? Hello to you. Mr. Bob is right down below that. Hey, Mr. Hale, how are you doing this evening? And we got Cindy right there, too. So many opportunities for learning. First time I ever have been led to Patreon. Well, uh, hopefully you enjoy it if you're one of my patrons. Yeah, I think you are, actually, now that I see the name. I'm not one to do stuff like that, either. I, I can say that there's been one person in my life and there's a video on it too uh, his name was Lou um, and he's still alive he's still I still check him we're on LinkedIn together and stuff like that too he was like a mentor to me um, he wasn't really an official mentor he just was always helpful to people if he was your boss and you needed something he always helped I mean the guy for crying out loud in his wedding anniversary flew in and missed it all just to cover because we we had a dire medical issue and we we had lost a 
my wife delivered a stillborn. It, it was a bad experience. Let's just put it that way. And um, he was just incredible and did everything. I mean, it was just it's that type of person that I wished everybody had. I can't be that for somebody though. I'm I don't have any ability to mentor anybody, and I get that. There's been days where I've had three people, four people ask me that. I, I don't. I'm not interested in any course trying to show you or train anybody like that. Um, again, I show people stuff. I like the stuff aspect of it. I love the stuff. I love the technical aspect. I love the the you know working over and trying to get past road road uh, bumps in the road and stuff like that. But I don't. I don't have the time. First off, if I had to charge for mentorship. I'd feel guilty and I'd, you probably wouldn't want to pay as much because, again, I make more money selling than I do most anything else. I do YouTube, obviously, I make some money on it, but it's not anything like, even Patreon, it's not anything like what I do online. I mean, reselling. That's the majority, like 95% of our business is all about reselling. You know, that's it. That's that's what I am. I'm not a YouTuber. I don't have fancy channels. You don't see me pushing out guides. Any of the guides that come out, and I do have some I'm still working on. Still working in a 78 buyer's guide. I'm still pegging off a couple photos every other day or so. Um, and I hope to have it done soon. Uh, let me just talk about this for a second. I know there's, I've got at least a dozen or so Patreons I can see in here now. I would have it done a lot sooner had there not be like some hierarchy in the record industry, the record collector's industry. If somebody gave permission to use a photo to certain people, they'll never give me permission to do it because they only want those images shown in their friend's book or their friend's whatever. And I never realized that, that people were that protective of it. It didn't make any sense. If I had a, had a record or something rare and you know I'm proud of it, I don't care who puts it. If it's in every book, it's advertisement for me. I don't, I didn't, I don't get it, but that's, that's what I've run into. I give such and such has permission to use my photos and he doesn't want me putting them anywhere else. And I get all these other things and it's, it's a nuisance. I'm going to have a button guide though. I'm telling you right now, it's going to go into the stuff that you just won't find in the other button books. It's going to be like a picker's guide as well. It's going to give you some basic prices, some things to look for, as well as some overall ideas and where to find stuff too. That's that's coming out. The wife's helping me write it. It's going to be a co-authored book by me and the wife. Uh, the kids and some of my employees will be taking some fine quality photos. So that's coming out. I'm also going to have a Victorian trade card book coming out. Now those will be available to purchase on their own, but they're going to be included in Patreon. Excuse me, I've got sinuses and the dogs down here too. The only thing that wouldn't be included ever in Patreon is stuff unrelated to reselling. I do have a book that I need like one more chapter to do. I've <clears throat> offered to maybe post a chapter in Patreon, but it has nothing to do with... Um, reselling and there's some adult content in there there's a death story in there and it's all based on you know semi well i would say probably all basically real experiences um <clears throat> if anybody's interested i i that was part of some of my college work as well and i've worked on it ever since after my creative writing teacher recommended i should publish that so which i don't get you know somebody saying that very often again i'm not trying to brag let me just get off that topic i don't want to be going off in a tangent here jeffrey d how are you doing Good to see you on as well. Applebee's Attic Treasures, welcome as well. The Stun Law One, welcome back. Good evening to you. Duncan's got another. Let's see what else Duncan is saying here. Also, uh, eBay are sneakily relisting the odd one-off unique sold item to get extra fees. Yeah, I think it's just some technical issue. They're just totally oblivious to. I wish I, I wish I could get into their IT department or at least just talk to see how knowledgeable the people they have in there are. <laughs> My guess is maybe they're hiring people out of off the street just out of college because they pay them less. I mean, you know, who knows? You know, because it keeps seeming that a lot of the long-time people aren't there anymore. And that's troublesome when it comes to IT. IT is its own different game, I mean, I guess you could say. I know coding. I took quite a few um, coding classes. You know, I know Visual Basic, C+, um, uh, geez, uh... SQL, I took PHP, uh, HTML, uh, CSS, cascading style. Um, geez, I took a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'm missing like three, I know, but uh, I've talked about them before. If, if you, you do a lot of stuff like this, it's helpful to your business. It's helpful to know how all the electronics and you know how everything hooks up, to know how to fix issues. I, I haven't had a computer in the shop in... 
20 years, maybe 15 years. I fix and repair and swap out and upgrade everything myself. All the software, all the cleaning, all the everything that to do with anything in computers is all done by me. I run the servers in our house, and we have two servers. I run a server somewhere else that, that's all you know tied in. Um, you know, we've got virtual running as well, virtual PC running. I do test things. I do have script that we wrote. Um, you know, I, I love that kind of thing, and it, that's helpful to your business as well too. Just you know, if you don't know all that and you just know like just the one thing, like um, database or SQL or something, you're missing part of the picture if you're working in, in that type of a field, in my personal opinion. They're all similar, but they all have like little differences, I guess, all the languages. Balta, how you doing there? I think I've got an email from you. Again, I'll be answering all Patreon emails first thing in the morning. I think Audrey, I think I think Audrey was on there too. I, I think I've got like five emails in there, if I'm not mistaken. I was I know you guys I just answered them just uh, I think yesterday was it? Jason, how are you doing this evening? Hello as well. Hoptman, how are you doing? I see you changed your thing there. Hope all is well. Finally able to catch your live show sales good. New Shopify up and running. Rebuilding my email contact list. That is a good surefire thing to do, I would honestly say. Once you've got your own Shopify, I'm sorry, my dog's down there. Once you've got your Shopify, you can create your own mailing list. You can do all kinds of things with that. That's something you can't do on eBay. That's something you can't really do on Amazon or any other platforms you do. We're working on it. I've got, you know, I've got all kinds of stuff rolling and ready to go with, with our whole um, broadcasting out. That's why I say I've been putting in so many hours, like 12, 14 hours every day for like the last... 21 days, I think. I haven't taken a day off in 21 days as of right now. Not any, not even half a day. Because I want to get this done. Once I get this done, this is a huge move. So once Shopify is done and all that's done, things just start rolling in the right direction. Not that they're not rolling in the right direction now, but I'll be over that hump and I'll be able to see the expansion of the business fairly readily, I'm, I'm hoping, especially with fourth quarter. This has got to be done in my book before fourth quarter. I wanted it done last year before fourth quarter, but we screwed around with you know the other apps we were using Cellbrite and you know we messed with ecom dash and a few other things that we messed into and, and i'm just the shopify i'm done i'm done looking we've looked at all the other ones people holler out some other ones that they've checked out and stuff i've researched all this for for a long time go on go on for a very long time and you know shopify seems to be it um uh, the gentleman I've had on from Tenacious Toys, he's been on the channel before. He's his uh, store is Shopify, and I'm I'm very fine. I've heard enough, you know, good comments about it. It's probably the the best one I've heard for comment wise is on Shopify from anybody I talk to. So, you know, that's where I'm going. Um, I got dog hair all over. There's Annie. If you hit Annie right underneath Hotman, you've hit Annie's right next to her name. It'll take you to her page or her channel. Check out some of her videos as well. Let's see if we can't get Amy, Annie boosted up there. Annie's been on here for a long time. She does a lot of good work. She does a lot of help for other people. So check out some of her videos, please. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you once that she does a good job and it's worth your time to watch her. So anyway. Lefty Scissors really need to work on goals right now. I, I can't express enough. Goals are so much more important than anybody gives them credit for. The motivation when you reach your goals... And then you add them, you know, let's say your goal this week is to get 100 listings up, you know, and you normally only get 60 or 70. You'll be surprised at how much time you're just wasting doing stupid stuff that has nothing to do with getting stuff listed or getting getting more revenue in. You know, you piddle around, you'll put something on, you'll get sidetracked by a video or something you're watching or something, and you, you'll be off track in what you're doing. You keep a goal, you mark it down you so much. So if you do 100 this week, you finally get your goal, or it takes you two weeks. The second week, you're able to get to 100. First week, you blew it here and there. Second week, you get to 100. Third week, you should be 110 should be your goal. See how much you can get up. You know, for me, it's a thrill, and it always has been, to get as much stuff up as I can at a time. It's a thrill to see those numbers on there. It's motivation for me to see, you know, 25, 30, 35,000 listings on a store. It's It's motivation. You know, it, it's it's numbers that I never thought would be possible for for us, for a business like this. I'd never in my world or wildest dreams thought I could get 70 plus thousand items up at one time live active listings of stuff to sell. How on earth would I ever get 70,000 items in the first place? 
how would I be able to keep going with that and get stuff up? I never, that's again, that's, that's why this is so motivational to me because it's stuff that I never thought in the first place. Once I realized that this is all, it's a game. You just, you, you've, got to figure out how to win it is I guess the basics of it but once I figured out that there's so much more obtainable than I ever thought in my life that my whole thinking on this has changed to the fact of how much more can I get where where will this stop is it ever going to stop I mean because the sales just just keeps rolling in I mean it's it's gotten to be where I, I, I don't worry I, I don't have worries like I ever did before I, I can tell you in the last four years my my stress and worry level has dropped to I mean, to like 2%, you know, it's just so low, I, even with family issues, because again, we're in a good place. And and that's a good thing. I, of course, it helps that you like what you do, you know, so I can't, can't, can't go on enough about that either. But I uh, just got back from a basement pick. Aaron, hopefully you made some good scores. Basement picks, are, I like basements. I like attics and garages, packed garages, not like a garage sale, but at an estate sale, a garage loaded. Those are always the best, especially when they don't price anything. It's just pick out something and come up with it. Those are like always the best. Let's see here. Duncan, goal, eat good pizza equals motivation. If that's what motivates you. I love pizza, but I've got an issue with dairy ever since my spider bite. I've got poison ivy. I got it on my face. I've got it on my legs from cutting the grass in one little section. And the wife had to go out and take care of it. I, I go to the hospital on poison ivy, so... That's the motivation I have is never to get poison ivy, which I constantly miss and get it. But anyway, hey, Carl, how are you doing tonight, Carl? Carl in sunny Florida. Hopefully things are going well for you and yours. Uh, let's see, Applebee's Attic Treasures. I just got my email for the shipping supplies a few hours ago. Wow. The deadline for that, I think, is the end of this month. Now, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, I think, is um, posted the actual codes on that video that I have on many different comments. And I do thank you for doing that. Um, I was going to go back in, but I literally forgot. I saw those posted and I wanted to thank that, our subscriber there for doing that. Um, so you can see the codes on that page. You don't even have to worry about the email. Just go to my video and, and look at the comment section there. There's there's probably a half a dozen times where you'll see it mentioned throughout there. Thanks to Web Dub Dub. So just FYI, thank you very kindly. Um, let's see here. Another one, Bob, my uh, supplies email came in today. They must be staggering it or their system can't handle that many emails at once would be my guess. I've had people tell me they got them four and five days ago. Um, I, as I said, I only got it in one store, so maybe the other store will still get it. I don't know. Now, I just ordered um, 1,200 six by 9 poly bags is all I ordered with mine. I think it was... Um, 43 something for 400 of them through eBay. And again, I can get those like half that price from somewhere else if I buy like five or 10,000 of them, which is usually what I do when I'm not, you know, getting the eBay thing, you know. They're for a while tax. It cost me nine bucks or something. Um, but anyway, I used it up. Acapulco Gold, how are you doing this evening? Julesby, I can see and hear you loud and clear, and my phone stinks. Okay. I know I'm way behind. Let me try and catch up here. I know I'm very terrible on getting to that. Uh, we'll go for a little longer. I'm not in a major hurry here. Hang on just a second here. Got another email from somebody else. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's see here. Titan Fighter 00. Hey, Don, reselling has really helped our uh, separate business stay open during the pandemic. Do your quarter four sales will be strong. Thanks for all your business. My quarter four sales and first quarter sales are about the same. Sometimes first quarter is better. I pro project some massive sales this year for fourth quarter, basically because of Shopify and the broadcast out. Let me just shout out this too. If you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. It pushes up the numbers for the channel and stuff. You know, hopefully you're enjoying it. Hopefully you're here for the content and stuff. So if you do enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up for me. It'd be great to hit 100 before the show was over. I'm going to go for another 30 minutes. I said I'd hit for an hour, but I will go for another 30 minutes to try and get some more questions here. Um, again, things have been going really well. I mean, even with the time, let me just say this, even working 12 and 14 hours, I'm still in a great mood. I, I'm not stressed out. I don't feel, <laughs> come here, come here, come here. Our dog is deaf, we found out. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. This is Henry. I think you guys have seen Henry before. This is why my nose sometimes runs and everything else, or I get 
choked up because he's got a lot of fur. We're going to shave him tomorrow. He's a big baby, though, but he's deaf. One of the vets we took him to um, gave us some stuff for ear, ear infection he had and um, told us it should be fine after this, and he wasn't bothered, and we never worried about it after that. We'll come to find out after we got into some issues with that vet because they were just terrible on some things. We, we weren't going to go there anymore. Another vet says, you know, informed us, you know, he needs to have it on for a long time. And anyway, long story short, because of a bad vet, my dog is deaf from my opinion. But anyway, that's Henry. I think everybody's seen Henry before. Cindy, you should still get that email would be my guess. Um, but, uh, but back to Titan Fighter here. Fourth quarter should be monstrous for us. Every fourth quarter for the last 10 years has been bigger than the fourth quarter before it by a considerable 5, even 10, 15, 20% or more. Um, unfortunately, with the pandemic, though, there's like 20 plus states whose numbers are higher now after they reopen than before when they started to lock down. So my only worry is that there's going to have to be a second lockdown because they just didn't wait long enough or they didn't do enough. There's no tests or whatever the case may be. I can't get a test again mysteriously around here. They've pulled all those free testing stuff, and I'm not going to wait and try and argue with the doctor and get in there. I don't care if i got to pay, but anyway, the, the point of it is if, if something else happens and this goes in the wrong direction, I think Arizona, there are, all the hospitals are f almost flooded to capacity right this very second. Texas has some issues. Mississippi, there's some other, other states as well. Even California has some issues. If that happens and it forces a second lockdown, my opinion is fourth quarter will be well beyond anything anybody's seen, in, in my personal opinion. I know there's a lot of people that are laid off. What I sell is stuff that people don't really need in the first place. So if you're in categories or areas like that or stuff that's a necessity, it's still going to sell. You know, the people that buy stuff from me mostly don't really, I think a lot of them are probably in a spot where they're maybe retired or they don't really have to worry or they can work a job that's at home where they have money to spend two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500, a thousand dollars on a piece of paper. So I've tried to pick, and I would recommend this to some people as well, to pick areas that are, they have longevity to them. They've got, um, you know, um, recession proof to some extent. When there was a recession, I still sold the stuff that I've, I'm selling right now without issue. Again, that, that only affects certain certain people. Had I not been doing this, if I was working in a restaurant or retail or, reg, or regional, I'd have the same issues as everybody else. But being in the fields and the areas that I sell in, it, it, it's been a huge plus. That's all I can say is getting away from areas that, that don't have the longevity, like clothing. Quitting clothing has been the best thing I ever did. I mean, honestly, it's. I'm so glad to be out of clothing. I, I I hated clothing, you know. That was the one area that was was a bummer for me. I hated listing. I hated dealing with it. I just I just hated it. Now I still mess with leather jackets, as I've said many many times. I've got like probably about 65 of my own that I, I've kept, you know, and I keep in my collection. That's one of my areas. I don't. They don't have to be worth money. I just I like vintage leather. I I don't know how else to explain it, but anyway. Uh, let's see here. Yes, caught you live. Sabrina, how are you doing this evening? Let me slide down here. Their mobile app is awful. If you're talking about eBay's, yes. It is not a full feature, just like the API. I would imagine the same department makes the uh, mobile app is basically the API because, again, it's all going through third party and things like that. People tell me constantly that the phone app is missing this, missing that. Now, I don't I despise using a phone app to list on personally. If it works for you, that's fine. It, it, whatever works for you. For me, it's all scanners and flatbeds, uh, duplex scanners, um, uh, camera stand. Henry, what are you doing? Sorry, my talk's just snooping around. But um, I, I like the old traditional method. I have laptop everything. I got an army of laptops here and I don't know what I would do if I had to list on a phone. There's no way to go through and, and do stuff like I do here. You can't edit 500 at a time like you can on eBay. If you're doing volume, I would I would honestly suggest that you only do it off of a laptop or a PC. You can get a Walmart laptop if that's really what you want or find something for a couple hundred bucks that'll do you just fine for eBay and editing uh, photos. You don't have to have a big fancy anything. We have bigger ones. I have 17 inch, and most of them are accessible with, you know, Optima or some different type of, you know, storage to either speed it up or they have SD um, solid state drives or something. Um, and I have most of them set up for graphics. So if something happens, I can run a show from multiple uh, laptops. It's just, you know, double protecting yourself, I guess you could say. 
Uh, what's the code? I don't need and remember the exact code, Steve, a lot, but if you go to there, there's three different codes. It depends on your store level as to which code you use. I think the Anchor Store was thanks a lot, maybe. I could be wrong, but it's something like that. I think I missed somebody. Yep, I missed a couple. Are you a collector? Good evening to you as well. I did get the message from eBay for the free shipping supplies. Thanks for the heads up. Angela, I sent you an email about uh, part of finding a juvenile bald eagle that was taxidermied. I would not touch that. I do not check emails pretty much unless it's in Patreon, just to tell you ahead of time. Um, I, I, there's no way I could answer the emails that I get. If you saw the amount that I get, my my auction professor mailbox is inundated with people trying to get me to do stuff with them or advertise their junk on my channel. I'll, it's just it's pathetically awful. I can't even keep up anymore with you know, spam, hitting spam. I just, you know, sometimes I'll go in there just for a five-day period and it'll be like 197 emails in there from either people or, or stuff like I don't have any time. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. There's no way. If it's a bald eagle, don't touch it. I would um, not buy it. I wouldn't mess with it. I wouldn't have anything to do with a bald eagle. Just having a bald eagle feather can put you in jail. Just FYI, it's an endangered species. Don't ever mess with anything bald eagle. Don't ever mess with anything um, tortoiseshell or ivory. Those are endangered species, and there's a strict law against that. Don't touch it. Don't have anything to do with it. Don't announce you have it. If you do, I would quietly ask if there's someone you can donate it to, but that could get you in trouble as well. It's against the law. Don't mess with it. Best thing I can tell you on that. Uh, hang on. Cypher, how are you doing? How many unique items are you able to list today as yourself or and as a team? I can list depending on the item... No exaggeration. I would say in an hour I can do about 28 to 32 listings in an hour if they're paper and two images, front and back. I do uh, upload three, so I'll have a zoom in if it's paper and then a front and a back. So I can do one listing in about a minute and 30-ish seconds, I could say, if I'm zooming on them. And that's usually what I try to do. I'll just crank on some music if I'm listening, and that's about what I do. So you can equate that out to, you know, eight-hour shift, a 10-hour shift. Employees do less than that, but, you know, I, I kind of do keep track of what they do each day to see. And, and most all, I think, I'll, yeah, they all have improved or list more without errors and stuff. I don't care if they take longer to list them if it looks good and I'm doing well. I kind of judge on how many they need to list for me to make money, of course. In many cases, though, if they list, you know, two items in an hour that sell, I'm fine. You know, I don't have anything to worry about it. But, of course, they list quite a bit more than that. You know, average 20 or 22, I think maybe they get somewhere in that range. It just depends on what they're listing. If it's three, uh, two photos and then upload a one photo double for the zoom in, it might take a few moments. But minute and a half, minute and 34 seconds. I used to time it. I have one of those, um, what are they called? Um chess game timers if you know what those are and i also have some of the like the digital timers from the restaurant days but uh cindy yes you can post the codes if you have them that's fine with me they'll be way at the bottom i'm sure but everybody if they need to find them somebody if you want to post the codes go into the comment section down there people will be able to see the codes instantly from the comment section they won't have to go through the feed if they're they're interested I meant to do that. I honestly did. But, I mean, you, things just get so crazy these late, lately. Uh, can you do a video on Shopify for beginners? Checked it out, but seems like a foreign language to me. How are you doing as well? Harry Loomis, new and used. I love the IT stuff. So, for me, I don't... I'd rather just try to figure it out on my own. That's how I am. When I worked at some of the places I've worked... I worked at Pilot years back, and they have a system for payments and all that stuff, and I figured it out. That's how I am. I like to, to just figure it out on my own, and that's the best way that I can learn. I'm going to go into more details on how to do it, but there's a lot of stuff like setting it up that I just can't show because most of it's personal information, and all you'd see is a bunch of white boxes on the screen if I was blocking it all out. Once it's up and running, I will have some videos on you know, promoting out to the channels. I will have some videos. I already shot some of this, mind you, on setting up because with Shopify and whatever new channel you go to, for that channel, you have to set up new shipping rules. Your shipping rules from eBay will not carry over at all. Just FYI. So you got to have business policies on every different channel that you have and Shopify. So just keep that in mind. Like when I went to HIP or Etsy, they're all new shipping 
uh, uh, setups. I use the basically the same principle that I do for Amazon. Amazon has shipping policies and business policies basically as well. You can set up one for certain categories, however you want to do it, and label them however you want. That's exactly what I do with eBay as well too. So that would be my honest, honest recommendation for that. Um, you need to set it up uh, business policies on eBay and then use a similar policy for the rest of what you do for all the other platforms and sites you're going to. Shopify or or something along that line is the way of the future in my book. You might as well get it on at some point because the way eBay's market has been diluted. And again, I'm not picking on eBay. Everybody says you're being negative. This is just the facts. eBay will admit that they're losing ground to other people. Th that's the point you have to balance out. If if their business is going to somewhere else, you've got to figure out where that other business is going and be part of that as well while you're at the ground level here because who knows in five years ebay could be gone and some other company could be there 10 years it could be totally different ebay's top of the line better than amazon and amazon is having issues one wrong move these days can tumble a business if you do something really stupid so just keep that in mind i would say another show or another channel is dumping dumping people into this live feed because i've just hit 331 i don't think i've ever had that many people on but Good to have them in. If you're enjoying the show, please do hit the the uh, thumbs up button. But let's get back to some questions here as we do. All the resellers seem to drink Mountain Dew. It's, it's so good. Gabe, I don't know. I like Mellow Yellow, honestly, better. But Mountain Dew is great, too. Um, we've been a Pepsi family, I guess, to some extent. My wife's a huge Pepsi fan. If you saw our kitchen, it's all vintage Pepsi signs and light up Pepsi clocks and things like that. I love soda shop stuff, too. Our vin our, our table in the kitchen's a 1949 Saturn table that we've had redone. Uh, let's see here. I do like Mountain Dew, though. Greetings, Crystal L. Good to have you in the show as well. Hopefully you are doing good. Again, for Patreon, there is a video coming up tonight. It's right after the show. It's already up. It's already uploaded. All I got to do is put a thumbnail and then post it to the Patreon page. So just FYI again. Uh, baby bunny, yes, I know I'm way behind. I'm way behind. I do answer the question straight from top to bottom. Uh, the Stun Law one, hi Don. Selling on eBay since last September, just 273 items listed right now. Sales going okay. Quantity means a heck of a lot in reselling. I, I can't express that enough either. Yeah, we have some good purchases when we first started, and we've had days where we'd make a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars in a day. That was mostly though when we were running week auctions, starting on Sunday, and they ended on the next following Sunday. I could almost set my dollar amount how much we'd make for every twenty-five listings um, right off the bat. It was just, it was almost clockwork. I could do that with it. Um, it's not always like that, of, of course, but the, we found that the best way to be the, the most successful for us was to have quantity and to stick away from the, the categories and the aggravation we got from the other awful categories. Um, again, you see where my business is as uh, steered to. Um, hang on, it looks like we've got somebody trying to spam me. Hang on just a second here. For some reason, now I can't get... YouTube to work. Hang on. There we go. I got it back up. Sorry, folks. My whole feed's gone again. Boy, it's way gone. Hang on just a second here. Yeah, we've got somebody pumping other channel in here, it looks like. Yeah, hang on. We'll go back up here. Yeah, hang on. I'm sorry. My feed's totally locked. I'm at, uh, okay, here we are. Hang on. I think, let's see if my, my, my chat's still working. Uh, hang on. My, my chat's totally gone here. Wanted to get to some more questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is getting ridiculous now. My chat keeps locking up on my end. Uh, okay, hang on. I think it's now working. Okay, hang on one second. Sorry, 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 sorry. I may have missed a few, but let's go on from here. How does a bid show as private? If the person who's running the auction lists it as a private auction, they won't be able to see anything. It'll just say private. You won't be able to see feedback or anything like that. There's many settings that most people aren't aware of. 
273 items listed since last September. Yeah, Annie, you're right. Annie's, if Annie calls it out, you're pretty much safe to follow what Annie says. I've never had any doubts in Annie. The stun law. Should I go to a full eBay store? Don't go to a full-time store, a full-level store, unless you're, I've uh, done the math. If it's cheaper for you to run a full-time up yours to a paid store, as opposed to doing it the way you're doing it now, go to a store level. Think of it as math, as math, as as financially. Is it financially better for you to be a store than it is to just list individual items? That's where you want to go. Don't worry about anything else. Just look at the math. Math is all that matters. How much money will you make? more by doing that. Is it going to save you 20, 30, 40 bucks a month every month by doing it that way? Multiply that at that time that out and that might be, you know, half a month's rent you save by getting a store. We didn't go up to a store until we were financially better off by going to the store. Do the math. Always do the math. Calculate how much you're spending, you know, dollar for dollar just for your list fees, just the list fees, no final value or anything. Look at the list fees and then compare the bottom store level to that. That's all you got to do. Like if, if you have good items and 273 is enough to carry you through, set some goals and, and list that many items on that specific time frame. That's all you got to do when you're doing this. You know, and, and use the goals for, for your standard. Now I said I could, I could do 30-ish, 32, somewhere in that range, listings an hour if, I'm, if it's a two-picture listing. And it's paper because all I got to do is put a price and a title. It literally takes moments. And I've showed in videos me listing that quickly as well, paper items. You know, it all depends on what you have and, and what your business model is, of course, too. But listing items and having a quantity isn't for everybody. There's people I know that only have a few items up, you know, that routinely sell them. They're wholesale items. They're stuff that they always make good money off of. You know, you just can't beat it. I mean, if that's the case. For me, I don't have the luxury of only being able to sell a few items. I have to go to volume. Again, clothing's dead around here. I'd be even worse off if I was doing clothing right now because I wouldn't have anywhere to get it. You know, but with what I do, I've got enough inventory for years probably at this point. If I just listed the buttons that I bought, that $4,000 purchase of buttons, those button listings, there's probably... 1400 1500 listings maybe more than that i mean uh, there's some that obviously have multiples of the same one but that's that's a lot of listings for something like that let's hop to some more questions confirm for me please seller gets paid in payments i'm not sure what you're asking Yeah, Gabe saying the same thing. That's how many I have up. I, I, don't, don't compare yourself to another channel. Don't or uh, to another YouTuber. Or, uh, to a YouTuber. I got YouTube in mind. Don't compare yourself to another eBayer. Don't look at somebody else's posting or something showing all the boxes and all that stuff going out. Never ever compare yourself to somebody else. They're running a totally different business. It has nothing to do with where your business is at, where your levels at, what you're selling or anything else. Everybody is different. I don't, a lot of the times when they'll say, I, I sold $4,000 today, they may have $3,200 invested into that $4,000. So they only made $800 before fees. I, I don't look at those numbers. They mean nothing unless you give a breakdown on those, those items or those, those specifics. It means nothing. They may be a drop shipper. They may sell $100,000 a month on drop shipping, but their percentage of profit may only be 5 or 10%. That's those are real number possibilities. Five or ten percent may be good for some pe people drop shipping. You know that's still five ten thousand dollars a month before taxes, but you know they're still making good money for them if that's the case. You know don't don't look at don't compare don't worry what somebody else is doing on any of that aspect. That's that's my honest opinion. I don't really worry what somebody else does. I totally these days just block it out. If somebody asks me to look at their store, like a patron or something, or I'm doing a store review. I, I do it, you know, and then we go from there and it, it's not, that's a different, that's, that's helping. I don't care what somebody else has sold or how much they've sold or where their volume is or where all the business is going. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter to you. Again, it goes back to getting all that extra junk out of your mind and only worry about your business and growing it. 
Now, if you're judging someone else's business to help grow yours because they're doing something that maybe you're not doing or you don't understand, that's a different story. I do look at competitors. Zooming in, the zoom in to the images that I, I've started to do religiously on every single piece of paper that I can do it on is from somebody else, my head competitor at the time. I've surpassed him now only in sheer quantity and volume just because he's a one person and it's taken him years to get as many up as he has, but great person. In fact, he's a competitor who wrote the book literally on the topic that I sell in. So anyway, um, you know, whatever your business is, you've got to look at it from your business standpoint. I get questions on, you know, what do you do for your business? Can I do that for mine? I, I can't. I don't want to tell somebody because it works for me, it's going to work for you because you, you don't know. I don't know what anybody else sells. I know if you sell vintage like me, the same kind of stuff, the, the quantity aspect of it works. I, I, I can tell you 100% me having, you know, 70,000 listings active at one specific time works because I always get sales in. Every day of the week, I sell postcards on many sites. Every single day of the week. I've had people sit there and make a critique and say, you only make this much, you only do that much on this or that or the other thing. I sell in multiple platforms. For, for uh, like, if I sell $150 in postcards a week, you multiply that times 52 weeks, then multiply that times a couple other sites. That's just postcards. You know, you've got to think about the big picture here. If you only make 50 bucks on an item every single week of the year, it may not seem like a fortune, $200 a month, but multiply it times 12. Then sell something else for 10 bucks a week or 20 bucks a week or something like that. We've got a couple ebooks out, um, and I've had them out. They're, they're unrelated again. I'm not going to give information out that we, it's under a different name. But the point is, we don't make much money on it. But at the end of the year, it's a couple grand more that I wouldn't have had had I not do, done it. And it was a couple weeks worth of work to write it. You know, in the evening, the wife helped. We did it together. My wife is my proofreader, and it makes us extra money. Again, a thousand dollars or two thousand or three thousand doesn't seem like a ton of money, but you do five or ten different projects that make you that money. You add that all up. It, we have we have a piecemeal business. Everything in our business is put together from a bunch of different sources. Once Shopify is up, I'm eleven plus different avenues or venues of income. And and you know again three, four, five years ago, it was just one I would have never thought or never even considered doing something like this, but that's been the way to go. Because again, the, 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 the buyers are all over the place now. It's not confined to one site. People look from Chrome, a Google search is where most people start. And finally, this is the first time I've seen eBay acknowledge that. eBay acknowledged in a, an announcement a week or two ago about why it's important to show up on Google. Again, I had a conversation with eBay uh, several vice presidents of entire departments on a video conference last year and complained about not showing up on Google. And nobody in that room on the video conference, we're talking about three people face-to-face -face talking to and several on a phone apparently as well, had a clue on why I wanted to show up in Google. It was crazy. But now they got it. Somebody there got it because the announcement board on eBay talks about it which is good. I'm glad. That's a good thing they did. They acknowledged that and they're telling people how important it is. Now, they didn't give you any bona fide reason or way to, to get yourself on there for sure, but at least they're pointing out things you should do, which is good for eBay to do. They finally are waking up to some things. The affiliate links was still one of their biggest drops since they've had the new CEO, but that's here nor there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go on to some more questions. Uh, let me slide down while it's still working. Hey, Penny, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on. Usually you're way up at the top. Uh, let me see here. Annie's got the codes. Thank you very kindly. And again, uh, Annie is extremely helpful. Click next to her name and it will take you to a her pair channel. She's got a lot of good videos on there too. She's one that I have watched. I don't promote many people, but if there's one worthy of watching... Go watch Annie as well, too. There's there's tons of other ones, but Annie Annie does a good job. They're, they're nice educational videos. They're well thought out, I should say, too. But anyway, she's got all the codes right there. Uh, yes, I need to start using the codes, but I don't know what to use them on yet. If you sh uh, do paper, I just bought, as I said, 1,200 poly bags. Buy something, you, you, it doesn't matter if, you know, if they set for a while. I don't buy cardboard too much because I usually try and get that locally. Because I can get it so much cheaper. 
Uh, yeah, thanks everybody. Thank Annie, whoever is using those codes, please. Disney Family 515, good evening. If you haven't hit the like button, please slam that like button. Now, from my side, we've got close to 700 people on tonight, which is a phenomenal amount of people for this. I don't think I've ever had even half that many on until tonight. So it's just some phenomenal number. Again, I, they keep pushing us out into um, from other channels. It's nice to see, but kind of surprising. Uh, yeah, thank you very kindly, Annie, too, for me personally. Uh, let's see here. Yes, Stanley, uh, Disney Family 515 video up tonight for those in Patreon again. Uh, let's see here, Gabe, Don. Do you do things like quarterly reviews, monthly reviews, etc., for creating plans or goals? You said you switch around listing inventory depending on the time of the year. Yes, I do all the time. Um, right now, we listed like video games. Um, let's see here. This is a little hard. This is a little different here. I listed all the oddball stuff basically first. I listed stuff for Christmas, the, the Christmas crafters will want, stuff that I usually don't list for a few more months because right now everybody's home and, and I've been selling a lot of the die cuts and things like that that I religiously sell for Christmas crafters in another month or two from now. But they're buying it now, so I did switch up everything to get those out first because while everybody's here locked up for the pandemic, everybody's been working on their crafts for Christmas. So... If you haven't done that, you've missed out a huge opportunity. It still might be a, a good opportunity with those who are still locked down. But, man, I've been selling so much of that stuff, stuff that people are going to buy, vintage items that, that crafters are going to buy. They're going to use to create something, Christmas ornaments or whatever else. And, again, I've got the Art Professor channel where I show you how to make stuff like that. You don't have to buy anything from me, but you can Xerox and copy, and it's all stuff that you can make. And literally, that's what they're doing. They're making all this stuff ahead of time for the Christmas fairs, the Christmas bazaars. So right now, that is a primo thing to list. Anything related to working out and stuff like that's off the chain right now. eBay, Watch eBay's announcements. eBay announces what's hot on their site lately. Again, another good thing that eBay has been doing is announcing hot items on the site. And it's on the announcement board. It'll say what's hot in the month of, and, and that's where it is. Just type in announcements on the search for eBay. And if you don't want to go through eBay, just type in eBay announcement board in Chrome, and it will take you there immediately as well, too. I honestly recommend everybody reading the announcement boards. I hardly ever check my email, but I almost always read the announcement boards. Even if they don't say stuff that's going on, I still read it. There are some good facts in there many times, so just FYI. Uh, let's see here. But back to Gabe here. We'll probably go on for just a little longer since I still got a lot of questions and a lot of people in the house right now. Let's see here. Um, goal wise, employees, I always set a weekly or a monthly goal. If an employee hits the goals, we do something special. Maybe I'll buy pizza or something for them after the shift at the end of the month or something like that is usually what we do, or at the end of the week. Um, sometimes a goal can be a, a 30 minutes of paid time where you can just leave 30 minutes earlier. Sometimes if they finish up stuff correctly without just throwing stuff out there to get it done, if they finish it 30 minutes early, I'll let them go too on those occasions. There's, there's all kinds of goals you can do for your employees. For me, I usually have a weekly goal of items I need to list. If I want, like let's say uh, I, right now, oh, I don't want to swing the camera around, but I've got probably 2,000 cards to list that we've already scanned here on this side, and then I've got the backup over here. My goal, once everybody is full back in house and you know we're safely able to operate at full speed, is to get these caught up in two months, because there's just so much, and I still have to push stuff in front of it. You know, right now we've been shooting for Christmas stuff, as I just said with the crafting, but not just the Christmas stuff for crafting, but holidays in general. Um, Thanksgiving, Halloween for sure. I'm ramping up with Halloween stuff. I've got feelers and emails and some contacts. I've been trying to pick up some certain Halloween items that should be hot this year too. I may holler those out in Patreon. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I just want to see how far I can get with acquiring these ahead of time. But there's some Halloween costume ideas that are going to be hot this year. Again, pay attention to what comes out, what's going on. You can figure out what's going to be hot. And I've talked about that in toys as well too. Same basic principle. Um, but I do set goals. I have year goals for sales. Uh, every business that I've ever been in or worked with has a goal for a year over last. If last year I did 10,000, I want to do at least, uh, you know, three to 5% over and above 10,000 for this year. That would be a goal for any business. But in many cases, like if you're expanding out for the first time, you may see a goal of like an increase of 30% in your sales to get to that point. 
you know, and that's not unreasonable. Like with me going Shopify and broadcasting out tens of thousands of items, not just from eBay now, but to all kinds of platforms, I could see a 30% increase, a 40% increase across the board. I could even see a double, you know, a 200% increase across all platforms together if I can push this fast enough and push it hard enough for fourth quarter. Again, now is when you got to do it. You, you can't wait till third quarter starts to do this if you're going to branch out like that because you got to get your feelers out there and get the, the advertisement, get the promotionals right, figure out what's going to work in Google for you to be able to do that as well too because if you can't do that with marketing, you're going to have some issues too going in there. We're, we're going to be paying for marketing, as I said, for Shopify. But the good thing about Shopify, once somebody finds your store and you have something that they want, they're going to be coming back to you because they can go to one source and get those items over and over again. And especially if they know they can work with you, you can't wait to the last minute to do that. Again, you're going to only be paying a processing fee through your own store. And, you know, so at a processing fee, I'm saving almost 10% in final value fees from eBay and a little more on Amazon, but again, I do sell stuff for more on Amazon. Same basic principle with Etsy or any other the platforms that I sell on. Having them on your own site is best. Now, another thing to think about when you're doing that is that when you do put them on another site like that, you may not want to be mixing certain things. So if you do wholesale and you've got a vintage site, you may have to have another site for the other items or just cross-list them and don't have them on your own personal page, which is something you can do with Shopify too. Shopify is an, uh, a universal uh, thing in my opinion. It's universally available to be used by so many people for so many things in so many different ways. That's what I found out from it anyway. So just FYI. Yeah, let me slide down here too. My guess is we're getting a lot of flack on the bottom of the feed here just by looking at the numbers. I've got 802 people in tonight, which is a phenomenal amount of people. This, uh, hang on a second here. Let me see where we're at. Yeah, I've got so much in here, I can barely keep up with what's going on. And my feed's locked again. I'm bouncing around, so if I miss you, I do apologize. This stream is your button to motivate us. Oh, well, thank you very kindly. I'm glad to hear that. If you want to hear motivation and goals is the beginning of this video for the first almost 40 minutes. So it's all we went into pretty much. So if you want to hear that part, wait till the video's over or backtrack it up to see the beginning of this. Um, every day treasures found go to patreon.com and search for the auction I have a link to the auction professor patreon page down in the description here as well just FYI thank you Annie as always uh, let's see here let me try and get some questions I'm, I know I'm probably bouncing around and missing some folks I do apologize Yvette Anderson, does your Patreon give access to po uh, past videos you've posted for the group? There's 164 videos as of tonight. There'll be 164. They're all there. They're all available anytime you want. There's other things. There's some guides. There's not guides. There's some, well, I think there is a guide part up there. There's some documents. There's other posts from other people, not other uh, other resellers, but things to think about. Not a ton of those, but there are quite a few. There's some vintage toy videos. Um, but there's just topics that I talk about. There's a lot of stuff I don't talk about on YouTube at all that's only available on Patreon. And I, I do that only because I just don't want to give out the information. I want people to be seriously interested in it if I'm going to give out the information, the insider stuff, I guess you could say, like stamps and the records. I pretty much almost always go into the detail in Patreon only. A lot of people don't really care about all that stuff from what I see. And, and I get a lot of flack if I put it on here. Patreon, the folks in Patreon are interested in knowing. They're not just there for, you know, oh, maybe there's a quick, easy way to get this done. If, if you're looking for a quick, surefire way to make money, I'm not saying that's my Patreon. I know there's people that tell you if you watch or join my Patreon, you're going to make a ton more money. I'm not going to promise anybody anything like that. But if you pay attention, you'll, you'll know a lot more yourself in the areas that I sell in. You will be able to make some money if you take that knowledge into factor. So... That's what I'll leave it at that there. Uh, well, good to have you on, Gabe. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me see if I can move my feed without it disappearing. Uh, hang on just a second here. My feed's like all over frozen. I may not even be able to get it up. 
Best show I saw to this day is the Caravaggio show in the Met in 1985. Now, that's a Renaissance painter. I'm sure that's who you're talking about. Uh, Albrecht Durer is my favorite from that 1500s time frame. He is beyond his time. He, he doesn't belong back then. He belongs in the modern, realistic world of today. Um, he is my favorite. Um, Rubens is another one of mine. And I saw at, at uh, Ringling Brothers Museum in Sarasota, St. Pete, has the biggest Rubens collection. And then we saw Dolly's Museum while we were there, too. Salvador Dolly did some phenomenal work when he was younger. Midwest Picker, how are you doing this evening? Jeff Cannon, good evening. Well, good to, ha good to hear that you've learned something. Again, my channel isn't for everybody. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people don't like, uh, I'm not flashy. I'm not going to, you know, just feed you some fantasy world. But to tell you this is hard, anybody who tells you this is just a simple and easy thing is crazy in my book. Or they got so lucky it's not even funny. I've worked at this and I spent a lot of time. But I don't care. Again, as I said, I like what I do. I honestly and sincerely 100% am passionate about what I do beyond just making money i don't the money isn't even it anymore i'd like to be known for knowing what i knowing these areas i'd be it'd be cool to be like the the victorian trade card person on the globe or the guy who did the book or something that's that's neat you know it's recognition but not in a money way it's more recognition for your knowledge your your experience i guess is is what drives uh let's see here I'm trying to watch the time too i do have something to do a little later this evening still I do do business calls till like 10, 30, 11 o'clock lately. Uh, I do talk to somebody tonight for another business deal. I've been asked, let me just touch on this for a minute here. I've been asked, how do you hook up? How do you get this deal? How do you get that deal? I got that a lot when I did that video on the $4,000 button purchase. We spent $4,000 on shirt buttons. 10, 12, it's like 200 pounds plus of vintage uniform buttons pre-1945-ish uh, for all of them. Stuff like that takes a lot of phone calls. It takes a lot of just digging in, finding out places that used to be in business and things like that as well. Certain things we found, I've tracked down where the manufacturer was back in the 1890s through the 1920s. I figured out a building. I figured out things like that locally sometimes, sometimes far away. And then I've tracked down who owns it. I've asked if you know there's anything left in the building. Do they have this? Do they have that? You'd be surprised what what sits in downtown city buildings and old downtowns. You know, some of my best purchases have come from downtown buildings that were used for storage. Um, there was like the letterpress letters that I've had. If you remember those videos way back when, I got like thirty-two hundred dollars worth of letterpress letters. And these are for printing, and I actually have a letterpress cabinet with all the drawers. You know, the name brand one from about 1890. And I only have like, I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks into it all. That came from a downtown building that the, the owner just didn't care what was in it. He just wanted it all out of the building. I don't know how many times I've had luck with that. Or that the, the, the building used to be used for a manufacturer from some of the stuff that I sell, you know, 100 plus years ago. And they never, ever cleared out the attic. They used the bottom. They didn't want to spend the money because it would have taken forever and on money. And, and stuff like that happens. There's like warehouses where 1950s uh, Coke and Pepsi soda shop signs show up in mint condition, still in the packages, still sitting in the cardboard cases. Because, again, for these same reasons, there's people that, that you can pay that will track down this type of stuff for you. You know, I'm just telling you, that's that's a good way. You're going to have to do some legwork. It's if you've ever metal detected, if anybody metal detects, I've metal detected for years. I've got a Tesoro that I swear by. I know they don't make them anymore, but I got a Golden Saber too, if you know what that is. And I swear by that thing. It's just an awesome metal detector. I can, you know, get a quarter, you know, almost a foot down in the ground as long as the ground's wet. But it's it's stuff like that, I guess. I don't want to get off topic again here, but uh, let's see here. Let me slide down a little bit more here. We are at 959 people in the chat or in the show, which is a phenomenal number. They must have dumped us from another channel is the only thing I can say. Uh, let's see here. Got mine. Mountain Dew, of course. Do you still sell off your eBay supplies? I do occasionally, sometimes, yes. And lately, I just buy the, the poly bags. I've got... I've got probably thousands of poly bags because I keep getting them constantly. And, and just before I started to decide on poly bags, I bought five 
thousand six by nines. So I've got all together maybe nine or ten thousand. We we use some months. I might use twelve fourteen hundred of those in one month. So you know it just depends. Sometimes it's way more than that. And those are just the six by nines. I I use the what's the other ones eight. 0.5 by 10 and then I do the 9 by 11s or 9 by 12s depending on what they have too and I buy those by the 5,000 usually when I can get them too it's way cheaper you'd be surprised and if it's even cheaper if you go in with a couple friends who resell like for cardboard boxes I'll buy a half a skid which is like half a pallet sometimes I've bought an entire pallet they've showed up with their truck the day it shows up we've just left it in the driveway till I could get it in the garage They'll bring one of their small little pallet jacks over if need be. But usually we'll split it up with three people. So I'm buying it at pallet cost. You know, I can afford to do that. And so can the folks that I usually go around with and do. I usually use more than them, but still. And is the profit worth the effort? To sell the leftover, yeah, you just list one listing for the supplies if you're doing it that route. And if you've got like a, a box of 50 of the poly bags or 100, you just list that up for 10, 10 boxes and just be done with it. It only takes a minute to list something like that. So, How do I keep my paper items organized? Just type in in my videos um, how, how to store or how I store uh, or storage. One of those terms in there. And you'll see I've got several videos showing how to store a million dollars worth of inventory. I've got a million plus in, in live listings well over that probably 1.5 mil in, in active current items up for sale of course they're not worth a million a million and a half but and then we've probably got about two or three times that and stuff we haven't listed yet that may sound like some horrendous numbers but i got almost nothing into it when you look at the figures that's the ploy on this most people don't get that wow we broke a thousand people on the show tonight awesome uh, let's see here. Just subbed Annie. Definitely will be viewing the business policies. Will be great to see what I don't have in place. Good to see somebody's paying attention. Annie does have a channel. Uh, hang on here. I'm getting down there. We're going to end it in just a few moments here. Annie, you deserve it, Annie. You don't have to be flattered. You've helped me out many times, many, many times. You're always very pleasant. Uh, again, you're the first. You and uh, um, who's the other one? Can't remember who the other one. You and Mike are the two my first uh, wrenches. I've got several others, but probably got to give out a few more here soon. Jay Spain Green, um, Tenacious Toys has been on. He uh, he's been on my show before. He's a very nice guy. I've talked to him many times. Um, he'd probably be on. Maybe I was thinking about having him on for this Christmas too. Maybe talk about hot toys, and we'll do another uh, toy show coming up here soon if anybody's interested. I'm sure Benny would be glad to come on again. Uh, I know we got a lot of feedback from the last one he was on. Once we open back up, we're going to go to Estate Jewelers again too, as I've been talking about. But this has put me way behind on that as well too. Uh, Taylor Anouf, how are you doing? Yeah, you're talking about Tenacious Toys. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I do have some of my items on Tenacious Toys' site, just FYI. So I do have a stake somewhat in there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mountain Dew, got mine. Hang on, my feed's just all over the place and terrible. Yeah, there's a bunch of people leaving stuff that we probably don't want to know. Uh, let's see here. Old commercials and toys. I love old commercials. As anybody who watches the channel knows, at the end of every one of my videos these days, there's a vintage commercial on there. Now, pay attention to those vintage commercials. Because many times it's stuff that you will find stuff related to. That's part of the reason I started putting those on the end of the videos, if you don't know that. Toys, uh, collectibles. The Schlitz beer ones were awesome. I remember those collectibles, Schlitz beer stuff, there are some that sell in that. Almost everything in the videos, the Marks toys, all that kind of stuff, Godzilla trailers or movie stuff, all that stuff has collectability to it. So it all plays into what I sell. It's a good thing to look at stuff like that. You'll learn something, in all honesty, at the end of the video from stuff like that. And it's fun. I really enjoyed the Apple one that I put in there. I almost didn't want to put that in there because I'm not a big Apple fan. But that video made Macintosh. I don't you can say what you want. Their marketing plan in 1983 December which pushed that out was just a I remember that. I remember how exciting the whole Macintosh was and the first time I saw one I was blown away. Nowadays it'd be a joke, but 
you know, it was just a phenomenal time. Yeah, I would say the chat will be uh, from people getting dumped in here. Yeah, they're you're gonna get that. I, I again, they dumped from uh, some massive channel is like two million like a month ago into this live show. So when they rolled off, they suggested my show, unrelated. So I don't know what what happened there, but we're almost at eleven hundred uh, people on the show tonight. So phenomenal number. I mean, I'm just really surprised. Uh, waste of energy. Yeah, I don't mess with it yet. Yeah, trolls. I figure again, that's gonna happen when. The analyticals for YouTube doesn't push uh, the right folks into your channel. To them, it's not a topic. They think it's a joke. But to us, this is our life and our business. So, you know, I play it by that. You know, they can do what they want. It's not going to offend me if they just want to waste their time. I mean, it's it's back to school days to me. But, you know, what live and let learn. Uh, can you do a video on how you ship 78 records? I already got several. Just type in um, Ultimate Media Shipping Guide and you will find a great video that shows everything you could want to know on how to ship 78s in any kind of media. It's on there. Um, it's been up for a while. It's it's sound, it's, it's a nice video. and Not just because I did it, but it shows you. It lists dimensions on the boxes in actual writing on the page or on the video as you go through it too. It breaks down everything. It goes over um, tapes, 45s, uh, LPs, 78 sheet music. Um, geez, I, I know there's some other stuff that goes over too. I think maybe cylinder records and maybe reel to reels in there as well too. Easy stuff to pack once you've done it a million times. I send out these days 78 records every single day of the week. Every single day. I send out 45s every single day of the week. Not as many LPs, but 45s and 78s are, are through the roof right now, across the board. Uh, school books are hot right now. If you're not selling school books right now, you're missing out because they're hot right this very second. So everybody wants to get it once they've signed up. My son's already signed up for his fall classes like a month ago. So we've already acquired his books while they're cheap. So anyway, plus we sell. I've showed you how I get. In fact, there's a a uh, um, Instagram video on me picking up books at this school for free at the college, the university. I picked up a mess of them for free. We made thousand plus dollars for free off of books given away at the college. Again, I know where to look, but you know, if you know what's going on, you can make a lot of money doing that as well too. So, uh, Let's see here. Can you do a video on how you ship somebody? I got that. I just came to say hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I didn't get to see what the, the trolls were. You guys were great getting it. I do appreciate that. I don't even see that sometimes. I, I go on to my little tangents here. Uh, yeah, whenever I do something like that, I report everyone right on down the line. They just set up a new account, but, you know, I, that's what I usually do. After the show, I'll probably go in and do any one that anybody hasn't done as well, too. Don't usually do that, but I do it on stuff like this. File language is supposed to be blocked, but the list you add, you could add a million words and still miss stuff going through there. I did spend like two hours one day adding in all the words I don't want to appear in there, and apparently that's not the case. Yeah, I think there's three videos on 78s in all honesty. Uh, let's see here. GMTV channel, how are you doing? Yeah, we got a lot of junk in here tonight. That's again, that's what seems to happen. Cause we're well over eleven hundred people on the show tonight. So uh, let's see here, because they're all like, yeah, that's the codes again. <laughs> Thank you, Duncan, as well for those of you who are blocking them. I will add some more mods in here too. Just FYI. In fact, Rich Sanders has been on here for a while. If I can do it right now, it's not going to let me do it. Yeah, my chat won't let me do it, but I'll add some more mods in here. Oh, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, we'll add a couple more mods in here. I keep saying I'm going to do that anyway, and I always forget. Mr. Sanders, you are now a mod, I hope. If you're not, let me know. Now my feed's locked up again. Hang on, folks. My feed's just totally trashed out on here again. Again, if you look behind me, there's a lot of motivational signs behind me. If people want some motivational videos, you know, something to look at, something to get your mind in the right mood, you can 
shoot me some names there and or shoot me that out in the comment section below. Again, I will be going through that and deleting whatever's left down there that's not right. This is the only show I think that's not set that way. In fact, we'll fix that in a minute here. But um, thank everybody for catching all the trolls. It does happen again. I, I can almost bet you, though, at the end of this, it'll turn out that YouTube dumped another channel that's unrelated. That's usually what happens. I knew somebody else who got bombed the same way once before, and it wasn't like an intentional thing. It wasn't like everybody going to troll their channel. It was um, one show ended, and it rolled straight into their show. And that, Again, it happened to me once before. It happens when you have... The more people you have on the show at a live show, if you've got a 1,000, you're going to have a ton of people popping in to see what's going on if there's that many people on the show. So... Good thing for the channel, of course, in some ways, but obviously bad for the chat. We're going to go till we'll do the, the two hour cutoff, so I got about 10 or 12 more minutes if my feed comes back up. In fact, I think we are almost back up. I will dig to a few. Yeah, here we go. I'll get to a few more questions if it'll let me, and we'll go from there. Hang on just a second here. Uh, let's see here. Diane Matthews, I have a first day cover with a Confederate flag on it. Are there any rules now about listing those? Postal history, for the most part, is um, void of anything like that. You can sell Confederate, you can sell German World War II items that are postal, covers, stamps, or coins and money as of right now still that's not a problem you can sell the same thing with confederate it's considered historical items in that aspect of it because who's gonna what are you gonna do with a, a cover like that it's probably like a gettysburg one from like uh one of the gar reunions or something like that or one of the stamp ones i can almost bet you i've showed a couple of those ca uh, caches on it in some of my videos as well too uh let's see here yeah, I block, hide, and report is what I always do. Uh, boy, you've got quite a few of them today. That's probably the worst one I've gotten. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, very kindly for all that. I will give out some more, um, some more wrenches here soon, too, as well. Thanos car. Yeah, why was that in my recommendations? That's exactly right. So... Amazon's analyticals are giving people the bad recommendations is what my guess would be. So I'm not going to blame everybody for being shoved in here. I just would leave if that's not my thing. But that's why uh, the feed goes like that. And the thumbs up, thumbs down changes when that happens. Uh, again, if it hasn't happened to you, it's going to happen to you one of those days for sure. Whack-a-mole, Gail. I, yeah, very so. Uh, thank you, Pat D72. Very, very kind of you. I switched to manage payments. Going to be mandatory. Yes, it is going to be mandatory. Uh, let's see here. Thanos car reselling. Hey Ben, how are you doing? Again, if if you're a patron, and I see quite a few patrons in here, video is up tonight as soon as the show's over. Just give me about ten minutes to copy the link and post it in the Patreon feed and you'll get it right tonight. You'll be able to watch it tonight. It's as long as the last one. So, And there's, I think, another 30 minutes left of that segment on that video for the 45 records. Um, again, the video up today you want to pay attention to because there's some bolos in there. You're going to recognize some of those right off the bat, stuff I've talked about, but bolos you need to pay attention to. You're going to find them, I'm sure. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, see, we're still going up. I've got 1,200 people in here now. And more that are being reported. Uh, okay, looks like I'm either frozen or we're caught up. I'm not sure which is the case. Let, let's just touch on goals as the ending for tonight's show and motivation. Now, for, for some people, you know, a goal doesn't mean much to them. What I can say for those folks, and I, there's been a couple of said stuff like that in, in tonight's show, if, motivate, if a goal isn't motivation for you, what I would recommend you doing, and I, I said this before, is to keep track of what you're doing for the week. If, if you're picking up 100 items, write that down. Write up you know, how many you're picking up for a month. See how much you do a month. If the first week you, you do 100 listings, next week you're doing less, you know, write that all down. See what you're doing in a month. See how much stuff you're buying, how many sources you're going to, how many items you are listing. 
And, and you're going to see that there's some spots where you're lacking. You're going to look at your time, how much time you've spent. A lot of people who don't keep goals or don't keep track of this stuff don't realize how much they're wasting by not doing that, either in time or just in energy in general. If I make a goal and I list a certain amount of things, I always feel better if I meet that goal. I always want to increase that goal. That is a way to challenge yourself. When you hit the goal, it gives you motivation. It gives you motivation to do better the next week. My 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 take on life is to do better than your parents if you're if it's at all possible. My goal is for my kids to do better than us and to have a better life than we had. You know, and, and that's with business. My goal for next week is to do better and have more sales and more items listed than I did this week. I mean, that's just a routine goal. Every company, as I said, needs at least or wants a 3% or more increase year over last, month over last, or day over last. The bottom end is, though, the end of the year. If the end of the year is up that much, I'm happy as can be, even if I had a down month and a better month. It's all an average for the entire year. Don't worry about it month by month. Worry about it at the end of the year. Obviously, if your months are just going down, 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 and not going up, you need to fix it. But, you know, that's a whole other picture there to look at. So, just anyway... I, I do love eBay. Hang on one second there. I do love eBay. I just don't like the people that are running it because they constantly make terrible, bad decisions that are always short-sighted. They're always thinking about lining their pocket now. They're not thinking about, you know, what's going to do, what, what their change is going to do for the future. That's That's the biggest issue I see with eBay or most of these companies. Now, I know a lot of people don't like Amazon because he's a monster. I'm not calling him a monster because the company's a monster, I should say. I don't know Bezos, so I'm not going to say anything like that. But they at least are looking at the future. They're investing in it. They're not just going day by day like eBay. eBay has got to do something and take that under control and turn that aspect around. Stop trying to be Amazon, for crying out loud, and do what they were good at, which is being the, the lead collectibles antique market on the globe. That's eBay, or was. I mean, they're still, they still probably are, but you know, if it keeps up, they may not be. The, the folks who started Poshmark and McCrary and all these, they're doing pretty good. Even Hip Platform is doing pretty good. Once another company or another business comes out and realizes, well, hey, look, I can do another collectible site. There may be a challenge to eBay. Look at MySpace. Does it, how many people out there don't even know what MySpace is? There might be quite a few, but MySpace was Facebook before Facebook was around. eBay might not be, eBay might be the, the MySpace. Amazon could be a MySpace at some time, or, or Toys R Us, who knows? The, the point is, you know, you, you've got to broaden your reach and you know, if a new opportunity comes about, you take it. There, even though I love eBay, I have no loyalty to any specific company. I have loyalty to my own business. If you're my business, I'm the stockholder. My wife's a stockholder. My kids are. The people who work for me basically are as well, too. That's where my loyalty comes into, to make sure they have work to do, to make sure that I'm making money. If I don't make it on one site, I've got to make it on another site. It, it's just the facts. If eBay isn't making money on something, they're going to move that part of it to somewhere else. That you do the same thing. Loving something is one thing, but don't do don't confine yourself or lock yourself into something just based on your love of a site. I should say nothing wrong. Again, I do love eBay. I've made that's that started me into reselling. You know, I don't know anywhere else I can have the freedom I have and still be you know well in the six digits any any day or any year year I'm going at this. I I I'm very happy with what we're doing. The money's fine. My stress level, as I said, is like 2% of what it used to be. I have no stress anymore. Just the, the feeling. If you've seen Jerry Maguire, and if you haven't seen it, whether you're a Tom Cruise fan or not, Jerry Maguire is an awesome movie. Cuba is just incredible in that movie, too. He's probably my favorite in that movie. The, when he's driving away and singing Free Falling by Tom Petty, that's the feeling I get when I'm doing something or picking up or going somewhere with my life these days. I, I, I can't express enough how... That is motivation for, for me, for doing this, for this whole aspect of my life. And, and it reselling, and again, to somebody else, reselling might be a big joke. And it was, everybody used to make fun of us 20 years ago. You know, they, did, they still made fun of us, even after we were able to buy a car with selling our PayPal stock. We bought a car with that, a car in cash. You know, all this is all tied to reselling. And, and, and even after that, they made fun of it. But now we make more than all of them. And all I do is sell some junk I pay almost nothing for. 
and we do it all on our own. I don't have any boss. They got bosses. Don't don't worry about criticism. That is motivation to me, to, you know, the criticism in general to do better than them just because of of that thi that that thinking on it. That's motivation. You got to find some motivation to 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 make this work. In my personal opinion, I mean, motivation has made me who I am. You know, goals are are getting that motivation as well. They work hand in hand. I, I again. Most companies have a vision statement, and, and my vision is, is what takes me to where I want to go to, your, your vision. Goals and motivation get you to the, your vision, what you want for your life, your business. My, the rest of my life is going to be reselling. That's it. I've done it now for 20-plus years. I've done it full-time for 10, and it's only grown. It's only grown, and I've gotten more and more opportunities. I mean, i got my sunglasses here. If the future is that bright, I'm going to have to wear shades. It's just that... I know that's cliche, but it's literally the opportunities are there. And even with what's going on now, if I had a conventional job, I'd be in trouble right now. I'd be in big trouble. I, I, there's no help coming from the government or anything else like that. You know, we can't work because of government, you know, this and that and stuff. But with what I do, I don't need any of that aspect. Of it. I don't need the day-to-day -day jobs or brick and mortar or any of that. You know, I don't have to go out of the house to do this. Everything's handled here. I mean, we've got a warehouse too, so don't get me wrong, but... You know, this is the life that, that I wished I would have had or known about, you know, 20 plus years ago. If I did this when I was 18 or, or well, it wasn't around when I was 18, but if I did this when eBay first came around full time, you know, I probably could have retired almost at this point because back then things were so much different there. Um, you know, take a chance on things as well, I can say too. I, we took a big chance. I risked everything. I threw all the cards on the table when we graduated college. Again, I, I've got a master's degree, and I don't, it doesn't, you don't need to have a college degree at all to do this. You know, I could have done this had I had enough courage and thinking to not go to college and, and still done this. I, I did college because I thought that was the right way, but again, I'm happy I did it. I'd do it again in a second, but you don't need any of that stuff to do this. This is something that's you can do your own thing for the rest of your life if that's what you want. Most people are too nervous. They're so locked into the way that everybody tells you it has to be that they don't take that first step. The first step is always the hardest. The first step of us saying, look, I'm just, I've looked for jobs. No, I'm, I don't want to move again. My mom's sick. I, I've got issues. I can't leave this area. There's no jobs that are going to pay me enough to, to make it. I can't do that. It's just not, not feasible around here. So... You know, that's after six years of college and all. We took the shot. I did it. I worked every hour I could. I didn't sleep. We, we did the, the tough times eating ramen noodles while the kids ate good. You know, there's no bigger worry in the world than having two young, small kids, a wife and you, and no technical job other than the reselling and the hustle. You know, that is motivation beyond belief. And it took us three years to break that to where we were finally seeing the, the light of day. And I, I, would, I would never change. I would wish we had a better life during that time, but the kids had everything they needed. So that's what mattered. But I wouldn't change it because it made me a stronger, a better person. And I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. You know, one day I may discuss, you know, my, my prior life and stuff and, some of the, the things that I got and why my, 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 I think the way I do on some things. But, you know, I've went through some hard times. I've done some, some terrible things, not to people, but to myself and things like that. And, and you get over that. Everything you do or happens to you, learn from. The, the book that I'm working on that's unrelated to reselling talks, it's my, my teenage years. You know, I, we used to enlighten ourselves, if you know what I'm, so, I'm saying there. So I, I've been around the block. I've done stupid things. I've learned from my mistakes. I've learned and I've moved forward. All of that has given me the motivation. I'm not, I'm nothing special. I'm nothing, I don't ever want to try and feel like I'm glorying for myself or trying to seem like I'm full of, I'm not full of myself. If anybody knows that, they did get it. I just, I, I wish everybody, there. as I said, I wish there was a pill I could give you to understand the feelings and the passion that someone gets for something. Because so many people just don't have that from working 20, 30 years for somebody else. It's, it's hard to get passion unless you really like what you're doing for somebody else and you like your boss. But for most people, that's just not the case. And it's just, uh, 
It's a sad, depressing situation working for somebody else. In my mind, it has been. I've worked for some terrible bosses who are just awful people in every way, shape, or form. You know, sleeping with the employee. I, I won't get into details, but I've, I've seen a lot of terrible things from people over me who are supposed to be the higher person, the better person, who are just terrible people trying to tell me, you know, how to do something properly when they couldn't even, you know, they would go to jail for half the stuff they did. Let's just put it that way. You know, don't judge yourself on what other people do or how other people are either. That's another aspect that far too many people in general, not just reselling, but far too many people do. And, and that's really detrimental to yourself, I should say. If you're able to put all that aside and not think about all those issues and stuff, that's, that's your best bet. Your, your mind, your, your mentality should all be based and put into your family and your business. And that should be your concern. If there's a glitch in it. Take it as a challenge, a goal to get past that glitch. Everything you do in life can be a goal or, or a motivation for you. Again, if, if my, my teenage years didn't turn out how they were, my father didn't die when I was 17, and I didn't have this or didn't have that, I may not be this person. I may not have, uh, have taken, I may have taken things for granted. I may not have taken chances because, you know, at some point, what do you got to lose, I feel? That's how I felt like in some, some situations in my life, you know? that the ego the loss of the big ego is is the biggest plus for almost anybody i've ever known um and i, I can't express that enough either again motivation is is this is all motivation for me any of these experiences that happen issues with my son with medical or anything like that is is motivation for everything and motivation let's talk about just two people just for a minute here mark cuban like him or, or hate him, whatever the case, Mr. Wonderful, like him or hate him, whatever is the case as well, they have motivation. They had motivation as a child. They didn't care what somebody else did. They didn't care what was that was preached to them as the only way to make it or the only way to do it. Don't follow the mold that everybody tells you you have to do. It's not the same world anymore it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. There's an opportunity to do stuff on your own, more so now than any other time in the history of this planet. It, it, you know, there's a lot of good songs. You got another thing coming. Listen to the song, I guess, Judas Priest. I hate to call back to that, but uh, out in the world, I'm going to sing it to you, but listen to the beginning lyrics on there, and, and, and that holds true for, for life in general. I'm not going to let this stuff go by. I, I've blown all 20 years of my life working for somebody. I'm not going to, I'm never going back to that stage. And that's motivation enough. If you're working a job, worked a job for 10, 15, 20 years, 60 hours a week, that should hopefully be motivation not to do that anymore. So I'll leave it at that. I know we've got a lot of, of comments and questions still on here. I'm running really longer than I usually do. 1,400 people on. If you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. Let's see if we can't crank those numbers up considering how many people are on. I know a lot of the folks that are probably on here are not into this channel and have no idea um, on what's going on, um, but uh, just FYI. Let me hop over here, and we're going to end the show tonight. Uh, again, new video coming out for YouTube. It, or it's already done as of right this second. I busted. I've been working, you know, 12, 14-hour days for 21 days now. I've got everything set up already for tomorrow. Give me 10 minutes for those in Patreon, and you'll have the second part of your uh, last, or the second part of the record video as well, too. Pay attention to that one. You may even want to take some notes. There's some specific discs I'm telling you to look for, too. But we will end it on that. It's been a good show other than the trolls. I do apologize for that. It's a little hard to do. Disney Family 515, you are a mod. If you didn't notice that, I did give out Rich Sanders, and I'll give out several others to, to those. If there's any longtime Patreons that would like to be a mod, too, let me know. Um, the more the merrier. Um, I'm bad on thinking of stuff like that. I'm sorry. I'm mo mostly interested in the content video aspect. And Anyway, I know I go off in tangents, but I do appreciate everybody coming on. Again, if you've got questions or anything like that, you can leave them in the comments section as well. But have a good evening, and I was glad to have everybody on tonight.